Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Teenage Night, and I am here with the Season 3 offseason. Obviously, this season did not end in the result that we wanted to. I had very high hopes. I hoped to go undefeated and win the National Championship. Obviously, undefeated was ended pretty quick by Michigan, and then Baylor upset us late in the season, and we didn't have time to recover to get back into the National title picture. So, we went to the Cotton Bowl and thoroughly beat Georgia by, I think, 21 points. And now we're going to look at uh, the season stats. And this was Trevor Knight's last season. He is a senior, so he is gone. So in his last season, Trevor Knight threw for 3,800 yards, 37 TDs, and 14 picks. That was something that started to come up really late in the year. He did throw a lot of picks early on. And then just late in the year, he started throwing inaccurate passes. And I got a, a couple unlucky breaks, like the interception... I think the second interception in the Cotton Bowl, where it was tipped away from the defender into the hands of another one, that was just a super unlucky interception. Uh, almost 300 yards a game, 67% completion percentage. Also, for some reason, our right end has a pass attempt. Not really sure where that came in, but it was an 11-yard gain, apparently. So if that's in a video and I didn't catch it, uh, that's kind of my bad, I guess. But he averaged 19 yards of completion and his long was 81. And then we also had Corey Cannon, who was our fourth string, but got to play against Kansas because it was such a beatdown. He went 3 of 5, 117 yards and a touchdown, no picks. Uh, Justice Hansen was my garbage time quarterback because I didn't want Mayfield to get injured just in case Trevor got injured. My, whole, my thinking in that was I didn't want Trevor to get injured and then have Baker injured. So I put in Hansen instead. That way, if he got injured, I could just move Cannon up to the third string. But Hanson went 3 of 6, 43 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. And Baker Mayfield, who is most likely going to be our starter next year, went 0 of 4 and 2 interceptions. I have high hopes for him, and I still have high hopes for next season. Let's move on to the rushing attack. This was Keith Ford's last year also. So next season, it looks like we're going to be starting some AJ P. Ryan. And good reason, 27 TDs. Keith Ford ended up with 10 TDs and over 1,300 yards. A six-yard average is not bad by any means. Trevor Knight ended up with 1,800 or 816 yards, a 5.6-yard average, and five TDs. Um, Hanson had a rushing touchdown, and Dimitri Flowers had four rushing touchdowns, and I'm pretty sure all of them were from the one-yard line. Now it over to receiving, which was a spot that I was worried about early in the season. But Makai Quick did step up and play amazing. And I think I figured out the reason why these stats are so low. It's because most of the time whenever I pass the ball, I'm going for at least a first down. So whenever they catch it, they're getting 10-yard gains. Whenever normally, you know, receivers tend to get huge gains. But I don't think normal receivers average 26 yards a catch. Or 19 or 25. So yeah, there's that. Um, Ford ended up with 9 yards of catch and a touchdown. Makai Quick, 13 TDs. Let's sort this by touchdown. Jordan Smallwood ended up with 9 TDs. Mark Andrews ended up with 7. Andrews kind of came alive late in the season. He wasn't really that big early on, but then late in the season, he just lit it up. And then Jeffrey Mead, who was my number 2, um, didn't really do a lot this season. He got a decent amount of yards, but he just couldn't get in the end zone a lot. Then we had our starting tight end, Taylor McNamara. He was a big target on third downs, especially that like outside post route where I just hit him going down the sideline. Uh, Dallas Todd caught a couple TDs. Marcus Moyer, our true freshman tight end, he was our backup. He actually caught a touchdown. Keith Ford got one, and Samaj P. Ryan got one. Now blocking. Blocking, um, there was there was a couple issues on blocking this year, like Kenyon Friesen let up eight sacks, Sears let up six. But if you notice. None of these guys... Okay, so our left tackle is a senior. But that's the... All these other guys are sophomores, or and we have one junior. So these three guys are all going to be with us for at least the next season, I think. I think... I don't know. I'm not positive. We'll have them next year. Um, our leader in tackles was Stephen Parker. Solo tackles was a tie between Stephen Parker and Dominique Alexander. Um, tackles were lost... DJ Ward, obviously. Sacks, DJ Ward. Interceptions, LJ Moore. He broke the record for most picks in a season. 
Sanchez had seven. He was our nickel DB this year, which means he normally played the slot. Stan Von Taylor got a few. Dominic Alexander. Lavelle Pitts actually got two. And Edward Parrish Jr., who was a transfer from LSU, only got one. I was hoping for him to get a little bit more, but I guess I will deal with what we got from him. He is probably going to be our number one next year because I believe LJ Moore is graduating yet. And so is Sanchez. So is Stan Von Taylor. So is Dominique Alexander. Our defense is going to look a lot different next season. Um, forced fumbles. Uh, Devontae Bond actually forced three. Okay, I did not know that. And I don't think we had a single safety. No, we didn't have a safety. Who scored the most TDs? LJ Moore. I think he had two pick sixes in one game, and that's where that came from. Um, just to look at kicking, I have this, if this wants to load. I know kicking stats for some reason take a little bit to load. Only 11 attempts, but he made 10 of them. I don't remember the one that we missed. He had 101 extra point um, attempts, and he made all of them. And the long, his longest field goal on the year? Okay, so we had 119 touchbacks. Can I not see his longest on the year? Most of his kicks. All right, so the one kick he made was from 49 yards beyond. All right, punting. Um, Kelvin Taylor only had 14 punt attempts. We do not punt the ball a lot. Normally, normally I either get us in position to kick a field goal or go for it. So we don't have a lot of punts. And just to see what happened in the NCAA, Trevor Knight actually did break the record for highest quarterback rating. Jameis Winston came in second. Uh, touchdowns was Devin Powell from Tulane. I think that's where that is. And then the quarterback from Missouri, and then Trevor Knight with 37. Leading the nation in interceptions was Darius Wade from Boston College. Um, Let's see, who had the longest? Bryce Ramsey. I did not know. I'll have to add that into the commentary once I get there, but we are facing Georgia's backup quarterback, apparently. Well, that makes that, makes that win a little bit less satisfying but let's see rushing wise Tony O'Gully the halfback from is that Navy and then touchdown to my JP Ryan only on 84 attempts the second place had 22 TDs and he had to have 307 attempts for that um, is there any other stat that we need to look at for here probably not broken tackles we don't break a lot of tackles that's just something with these sliders receiving wise Keevan Lewis, who had it in touchdown. Reginald Davis from Texas Tech. That guy was kind of a pain, if I remember. Uh, defensive. Leading the nation in sacks. DJ Ward by nine. Interceptions. Okay, so we have two people in the top. We have LJ Moore with nine. Sanchez with seven. I'm okay with that. Let's see if um, we led the nation in solo tackles again. Yes, we did. Our four people are in the top 10 for solo tackles from our team. That's that's ridiculous. Um, Force fumbles. Gary Hosey. Alright. We're not going to look at uh, those. Oh, kick return. Yeah, this was a big deal. Um, so he was... So Alex Ross was fourth in kick return attempts, but look at that yardage. He had 600 more yards than the guy in second place. And he averaged 42 yards of kick return, and he had nine touchdowns. This game doesn't keep track of kick return records besides longest kick return, but I'm pretty sure that shatters any record in college history. And then punt return, um, yeah, we didn't get one. No one got more than one. But let's go over here now, and let's look at... I guess we can look at school records so you can see what we have accomplished in three seasons. For school records, um, we actually have not got anything... For passing at all even though the uh, quarterback rating should be there let's look at rushing so my JP around with 27 is that all we've gotten pretty sure that's all receiving we haven't got anything and defensive oh we got Tapper who had 41 career sacks and 20 sacks and I think that was season one so let's head out of there and let's go look at the bowl results which I won't probably comment on too much just kind of scroll through them so if your favorite team is not Oklahoma, you can see who it is. Um, West Virginia actually ended up in the championship game. And it's pretty funny because if you remember season one, we did not win the Big 12, but we ended up in the championship game. And that's exactly what happened to West Virginia. They did not win the Big 12, but because we lost to Baylor, 
they got into the national championship, and we will see how that went. But our per our okay, if I could talk here, the people that we normally play apparently in uh, bowl games, Oregon, who we played in season one and two, uh, were kind of bad. They were all the way down in the New Mexico Bowl, 52 to 31. Uh, not really any big names so far besides Oregon. That was a close game. That was a close game. These are nowhere near the games that I'm interested in, except Oklahoma State got beat by UCLA by 20. Um, Tennessee and Boston College, Miami and BYU. TCU beat Penn State, so it's good to see the Big 12 is actually doing something. Um, Texas beat Arizona. All right, Texas Tech beat Nebraska. So, unless I'm not remembering correctly, I think Oklahoma State might be the only Big 12 team that lost their bowl game. Some of these games are just complete blowouts. Jesus. Uh, Missouri beat Wisconsin. Georgia Tech beat the living crap out of Colorado. Georgia Tech was apparently not too happy to not get into the championship game. Ohio State beat LSU. Um, Michigan beat Alabama. Baylor beat Houston. We beat Georgia, obviously. The Compass Bowl, Troy beat UCF. And the GoDaddy Bowl, Georgia State beat West, Western Michigan. And the national championship game was West Virginia and Florida State. And Florida State wins 31-27. Can we look at the game summary for that and see if it came down to the last second? And it did not. They still had over 10 minutes to score and they couldn't do it. But it does look like they had to uh, pull off a comeback in the fourth quarter, which Florida State is actually pretty used to. They scored 21 unanswered points in the game. They were down 27 to 10 at one point. That's just bad, West Virginia. And now we go look at the awards and see what everyone got, I guess. And then we can advance to the um, offseason. So the Maxwell goes to Dane Evans from Tulane. I thought it deserved to go to Trevor Knight. But, you know, I'm a little bit biased on that. Walter Camp goes to Dennis Andrews. I think I think Samaj or Keith Ford should have at least been in the running for that. Maybe not Ford. He didn't have a spectacular year. But Samaj was ridiculous. Uh, the Bidneric Award, which is Best Defensive Back. Now, I know these guys played really well early in the season and then through most of the Cotton Bowl. But against Baylor, our three people that are on this list played like crap. And had LJ Moore maybe... Gotten a pick against Seth Russell against Baylor. We could have maybe changed the tie to that game, and then he maybe could have gotten this award. Uh, Nagurski, uh, DJ Ward. O'Brien, Dane Evans. Uh, Walker Award goes to Andrews. And P. Ryan was seventh on that. Bolitnikov goes to Keevan Lewis. Did we even have a man on this list? Yes, Makai Quick is all the way down at 12 or 11. The Mackey goes to Melvin Vaughn. Outland goes to Ryan Hofield. Remington, Ryan Hofield. Lombardi, DJ Ward. Charles Walker was also on the list for that. Best linebacker. Do they really not have a name for that one? The Thorpe goes... Alright, is this the best corner... Oh no, this is the best secondary player, I guess? I don't know, but LJ Moore probably could have won that one too. Groza goes to Robert Roberto Agayu. The kicker from Florida State. Is Taylor on this list? No, he is not. Maybe we should try to get him that before we go. Or before this series ends. And the punter from Florida State also wins that. Uh, the best punter award. Best returner? Yeah, that was. That must have been a really hard decision for them. Nine touchdowns in one season? Pretty sure that was unanimous. Oh, the Heisman winner. I forgot to mention that. So look at that real quick. Your Heisman winner for this season is Briante Dunn from Ohio State. And what were his final season stats? Can I look at them? In 2015, he had 1,600 yards, 17 TDs. We actually had Samaj P. Ryan on the like ballot for it, which is ridiculous because he was only a backup. So next season, whenever he's getting a majority of the carries, I expect him to be at least second in it. That'd be nice. But we will have Baker Mayfield playing quarterback, most likely. But let's go ahead and advance to this offseason and see what we can do here. Okay, so we are here in the offseason now and the coaching carousel, which we're not changing teams. So we'll just advance the players leaving. 
But, I mean, this season, I felt the season ended strong with the Cotton Bowl win, but it could have been so much stronger if we had just been able to beat Baylor. I was so upset that we could not actually get that win. And it looked like we might have a chance, but that last interception by Trevor Knight just killed it. And then Baylor dominated our secondary. We couldn't stop them running the ball. Baylor was a powerhouse, a powerhouse that I was not expecting. Even though they were ranked number 14, that could have been one of the problems. Is I went into that game thinking we were going to beat Baylor easily because we had done it the past two seasons. I figured we were going to do it again, and Seth Russell had other plans. But now we go to coach changes. Let's see if there were any coach changes on our team because that always tends to happen. Can I go to users only? Okay, no. I was seeing maybe users only would just show, like, my team. Not the way it's going to work. And, okay, so we got an extension to our offensive coordinator. You're going to need to, um... Actually, no, the offense was actually really good this season. I don't know if I mentioned this because I have not done the commentary yet for the Cotton Bowl game. But we actually broke the record for most points scored in a single season. Um, Oklahoma had the record before... And Florida State broke it the year that they won the national championship in real life. And then they had 723. Well, we got 745. So we actually did break that record, which is fun. Um, okay, so Snyder retired, thank God. And their offensive coordinator retired. No other changes. This is like extensions and uh, Baylor got a new defensive coordinator. Great, their defense was already strong. And they didn't bring that guy back. Now to players leaving. God, this is going to be such a big hit to our team. Oh my God, there's so many people declaring. I'm, I'm happy everyone's declaring, but me, you're not leaving. Um, you, yeah, you won't, you won't regret staying to get your college degree. I think I need another year to develop my skill. Thank God he's staying. Baker Mayfield wants to leave. You can't leave. You're my quarterback. Um, you won't regret getting your college degree. Okay, good, he's staying. Samaje, you were the backup last year. Alright, so he's coming back. Edward Perry, you had one, like, off year. Like, th you had one pick this entire season. This is not the time for you to leave. Steven Parker, you're not leaving either. Yeah, you're coming back, and you won't regret to get your degree. Okay, so those are staying. Oh my god, here we go. We lost Trevor Knight, so we we lost our quarterback. We lost our starting running back. Keith Ford is out. We lost our kick returner. Alex Ross is out. We lost Zach Sanchez. We lost LJ Moore. We lost Devontae Bond. We lost Stan Von Taylor. We lost Kyle Mars. We lost Dominique Alexander. We lost Taylor McNamara. We lost Jordan Wade. We lost Hattari Bird. God, man. Our, look at this. Our defense is going to look ridiculously different next year. That is crazy. And these guys aren't even going into the draft. Atari Bird, even though he had a decent year, he's just graduating. So it looks like Trevor Knight will be entering the draft. Ford, Ross, Sanchez, LJ Moore. And that's it. And LJ Moore is going to be a sixth round pick, really, after he had nine picks this season. So we have the draft results. Um, I'm not expecting too much from this. Trevor Knight went in the first. Keith Ford went in the second. Alex Ross went in the second, even though he did not play a down at halfback this year. LJ Moore went in the fifth, and Zach Sanchez went in the fifth. And now, do we have any transfer requests this season? No, we don't. Okay, so it looks like we are on to recruiting. My favorite part, or second favorite part of the offseason. My actual favorite part is the training results, seeing on what we got, or who improved. Okay, so with recruiting... Um, I've got a few prospects to show you. One, we only have five scholarships left. So I don't know exactly who we're going to be getting. But let's scroll down here, and I will start at the bottom and show you everyone we got. We got Nathan Smith, a middle linebacker. He's not that great of a middle linebacker. Eddie Whitmore, a tight end. Van Miller, a new DB, 5'11", 180. Uh, Willie Jenkins, a new outside linebacker. A lot of these guys down at the bottom are going to be projects. Clint Moore, a tackle. From Purcell. Derek Martin, the number 21 tight end. Jim Warren, the number 32 defensive end. Kyle Hill, the number 10 strong safety. He could be a big part of our defense in the next couple years. 
Isaac Smith, another tackle. J.P. Harris, a tight end. Aaron Arrington, the number eight middle linebacker from Perry Heights, Ohio. He could be a massive part of our offense in a couple seasons. Then we have Tom Palmer from Hugo, Oklahoma, the number 18 athlete, and I'll show you his stats. And it looks like he could be maybe a safety. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like a safety or a very, very bad receiver. That That's pretty much what his options come down to. Then we have Marcus Summers, the number one DB. We did not get the number one DB last year. That was Chad Newton. He ended up committing to TCU. But, I mean, this kid looks great for a freshman. I mean, he could already be our nickel DB. It's going to it's gonna depend on what the rest of our defense looks like. Then we have Chris Anderson, the number two guard. Brandon Poland, the number three defensive tackle. Daniel Mobley, the number 14 athlete. And it looks like he could be a... Looks like maybe another safety or a very mediocre defensive back. Or a very mediocre running back. Okay, so... Don't really know what I'm going to do with him. Then we have Josh Johnson, the number six receiver. If I remember correctly, this kid was fast. No, he actually isn't. He can run routes pretty well, but we'll have to see where he fits in this offense. And then this is what I'm most excited about. We got Bryson Irvin, the number one halfback coming out of high school. 95 speed, 94 acceleration, 91 elusiveness, 88 juke. And we are most likely going to redshirt him for this year. So once he gets ready to play, he is going to be dominant. Then we have Ronald Hickman, the number one wide receiver. Six foot five, 210 pounds. He could start this season. 94 speed, 93 acceleration, 78 catching, 89 route running. This kid is going to be good. And then Corey Gunn, the number 72 guard. Nothing special there. Okay, so it looks like Brad Watson's main thing was quarterback, but we don't get him, so it doesn't matter. He goes to Tennessee. We did, however, get our fullback. That's the only one I wanted out of it. C.J. Pope goes to Colorado, and really the only guy that we're probably ever going to meet is Justin Carter, a 55 overall defensive tackle. So we may actually never see him play it down. And we did get the number one class, top class of conference, top 10 prospect, uh, three-star prospect, and sign-up prospect. Okay. So we are done with that, and if I remember correctly, um, the only home and home that I wanted to do this season setting up the schedule was Michigan, right? Because they beat us in Michigan, and now they have to come to Norman. So we'll have to set that up. Um, don't really care about this signing day, and now we'll head over to position changes, and we'll go ahead and set these athletes up to wherever they need to go. But we did play UTSA and Cody Thomas last season. That ended up in a beatdown. So I'm trying to think if I want to add them again. But this time, sure, we go to UTSA. That'd be pretty... I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to play Cody Thomas again in UTSA. But for right now, let's go to position changes. I'm worried about the schedule way too early in this. Um, don't really want to change your, your position, Baker. But we do have two athletes. We have uh, Daniel Mobley, who I wanted to, I believe, check in at. Okay, where is he? Is 79 overall that then, guys? Um, a halfback. Okay. Let's check and see how many halfbacks we have, how many DBs, and stuff like that. So with Bryce Irvin, we are not going to need another halfback because we have. Apparently, Mixon's better than Pirine. We'll see how that is after training day. Or training camp or whatever it is. I believe training day is actually a movie. But strong safety, well, we're set. Free safety, we could possibly use one more. And yeah, we have a ton of DBs. So, but none of them are great. He would actually already be our fifth best DB. So I think I want to move, or it's going to depend on where this guy plays best. This guy, alright, so. We're going to move Mobley. Over to E72. Palmer, I think, was 73. But he also makes a better free safety. Where is he 78 as? Is that, is that going to be running back? Yeah. So we'll throw him in at free safety, and we'll throw him in at DB, and that's going to be where we put these athletes. 
Okay, so now it is time for my favorite part of the offseason, the training results. So let's see how much better everyone got. We have three 99 overall players, but let's just go check out quarterback first. Corey Cannon's on 89. Hanson, who's probably going to be our starter in season five if I do that one. Um, Mayfield is going to be 99 overall, 85 speed, 99 awareness. But the stat I'm worried about is his throw accuracy, now a 98. He doesn't have that great of throw power. Actually, these two have greater throw power than the top two quarterbacks. Corey Cannon may actually be our backup next season. It's, it's going to depend on a lot, the kind of offense that I want to run, because I like to have fast quarterbacks. And actually, Hanson is faster than Cannon. Did not know that, so that's interesting to know. Halfback, Joe Mixon is apparently better than Samaje, but Samaje is faster. Same amount of acceleration, uh, but Mixon's got far better awareness. They're both good at breaking tackles. Got better ball carrier vision. I think we're going to start Pirine over Mixon. I think Mixon might be our kick returner if we don't have a better one. Um, fullback, we got Flowers, who's 84 overall now. Receiver, Makaya Quick is now a 98 overall. And after this season, Quick is gone. And then it'll be left up to Jeffrey Meade and Mark Andrews because Smallwood's also a senior. Any other big seniors on this team that I'm missing? Check again. Uh, Mixon's a junior. Samaje's a senior. No, because I didn't redshirt him. So yeah, we're definitely starting Samaje. We only get one full season with him as the starter. Tight end, Marcus Moyer, already an 82 overall. Um, how's your blocking? Gonna need to know that. So I, so I can see if I'm gonna be able to run the ball. And did I scroll past it? I might have scrolled up past it, guys. No, I did not. Okay. 72 and 78. Uh, that is... It's not great. And our left tackle is now 91 overall. Our left guard is now 91 overall. Our center is now 83 overall. Right guard is 93 overall. Right tackle is 92 overall. Okay. So we got a decent line. We've got a really good left end. Right end, we've got a pretty good right end. DT. Uh, we still got Charles Walker and Tenard McDougal, who is going to be new to the D-line this year. Left outside linebacker, we saw Jordan Evans. It's his last year. Middle linebacker. We are finally going to start freshman Charles Rice over Chris Thompson, who's a sophomore. I'm okay with that. Charles Rice, uh, I've used him in practice. He seems like he's going to be good. DB, we finally have a defensive back player in the 90s. So we have Edward Parrish Jr. with 94, Lavelle Pitts with 86, Chris Washington with 79, um, Vernon Anderson 71, and these two guys who are probably never going to see the field. So there's that. Free safety, Devin Morris is going to be our starter over Matt Williams and Kevin Harris. But he is a senior, so after this season, it will go to one of these two. Um, strong safety, we have Steven Parker, who is 94 overall. If he goes down, we have Ahmad Thomas, who's 92. And then kicker, Kelvin Taylor now on 96 overall. His awareness went up, but I want to see his kicking power. It is now a 99, his accuracy is a 96. Wow. Punter. My punter is still pretty trash. What is your kicking power? Because if your kicking power is still trash, it's going to be Taylor. 81. Yep, it's going to Taylor still. The fact that Taylor's kicking power is now 99, it's he's also my punter. So that is apparently how good uh, your season four Oklahoma Sooners have gotten. We have two quarterbacks in our top ten best players, two running backs in our top three, two receivers in our top ten, which I'm happy about. Finally, a DB up there. So this is my least favorite part of the offseason where we have to cut some people off the team. And I think I know right to the position I'm going to. To do this first, um, head over to cornerback. Van Miller, 63 overall. I don't see a lot of potential on him. Only 5'11", 180. I mean, we'll check we'll check some of his stuff, and if he's got decent ratings, and it's just a couple things holding him back overall wise, 
then we'll bring him in. But first, I want to check his catching. 51. So if, even though if the ball is thrown directly at him, he's probably not going to catch it. Only 59 tackling. Not looking too good for you. 69 pursuit. 68 um, play recognition. 78 man. 81 zone. 67 press. 51 release. Okay, so Albert Hall has worse man and zone than Van Miller. How is he a hard hitter if he can't tackle? That doesn't make much sense. So, we have to cut 10 people? Oh my god, I didn't even look at that. Okay, so Albert Hall, you're gone. Um, I don't like cutting freshmen, but it may have to be done because we're pretty stacked at this position. So, I'll keep him for one season. I'll redshirt him if he if he gets decent. Um, then I'll cut him. But, I mean, God, this is going to be some tough decisions. I can already tell. Kicker. All right. Make sure I only have one kicker. Make sure I only have one punter. Quarterback. I don't want to cut any of these people. Halfback. Don't want to cut any of these people. Fullback. Um, Kenny Henderson. Yeah, you're gone. I have Rodney Alston. Now he's already better than you. Receiver. McFarland played a little bit last year. And he's got good speed. But he's so buried on the depth chart. I feel like he's never going to see the field. Because look at all these people that are going to be playing above him. We have Alan Melton, who I think was the number one receiver a couple years ago. Dallas Todd, Mark Andrews, Jordan Smallwood, Jeffrey Mead, and Micaiah Quick. So, yeah, McFarland is gone. Um, we still have seven people to cut. Dang. And these three are all freshmen. Okay, if one, whoever can't block out of all of you is gone. That, that's what I'm doing here. Whoever's the worst blocker out of all of you is gone. And you are the worst blocker by far. So, Eddie Whitmore, you are off the team. Never put it down as an Oklahoma Sooner. Left tackle. Um, don't want to cut any of these people. Okay, yeah, he's a bust. He's on 58 overall. Get off my team. Center, right guard, right tackle. Um, are you? Nah, he's decent. Left end. Hawkins, you are so buried, but you're only a freshman. Okay, so out of you two, oh great, their stuff is almost the exact same. Um, acceleration. Who's got? Oh, I don't care about that. Um, God, this is... I don't like this. This is why I don't like the offseason too much. Or, I mean, I like the offseason, but I don't like cut days. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, Jake King. He doesn't have as good as tackling. But he's got better uh, power moves. And that's what I like in the left end. Okay, Mario Hawkins, you're gone. God, that sucks. He was a freshman red shirt. Hopefully this game will uh, throw him on another team because I still think he could be good. Does he, we don't have room on him for him on our team. Nathan Smith. I said in the beginning of the video this guy was not that good. Only 69 speed? Yeah, I don't I don't want you stepping on the field. You're going to get smoked. Um, right outside linebacker, Willie Jenkins is decent. So we still got three people to cut and we still have several positions to go through. I hate this. Um, Todd, Todd played decent, 89 speed. But how good is his catching? I don't remember if his catching was that good. 89, so it's actually pretty good. Um, Josh Johnson is good. Ronald Hickman obviously is good. 80 overall. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have to cut J.P. Harris. I'll keep looking to see if there's someone else I can get rid of, but... I mean, this is this is a pain. So as much as it pains me to do this, because I actually was really a fan of this guy recruiting him, Kevin Harris is going to have to be cut. I've got to make cuts on the team. Um, I feel like Palmer's got more 
left to play. It looks like Harris is going to be better than him next year anyway, so he won't see a lot of playing time. So Kevin Harris is gone. Still got to cut two people. And I was looking at Bill McGrew to cut, but he's that's too high of a rating. You can't cut someone who's 88 overall. Um, so I think I'm going to cut Joe Ross. Unless there's one of these guys can't play, but it doesn't look like it's that way. Um, go back over to their ratings. Man coverage, zone coverage. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and get rid of Joe Ross. It, it really does suck cutting freshmen. I mean, especially freshman redshirt because that means they practice with us for a year and then we're gone. And now we have one more cut to make. Brandon Lee played really, really good this season. Actually, Vince Brown never even touched the field. But the reason I was intrigued to in him is because he's 6'7". Um, let's check out your stats. And you have 74 tackling, 70 hit power, 79 power moves. Okay, you're not that good. So, as big as you are, you're not going to be that good on this team. So, Vince Brown gone, and we are 70 players. God, that sucked cutting all those people. Okay, so for the first three seasons of this series, we have had one Big 12 conference where whoever had the best overall conference record at the end of that won it. Well, that's obviously cost us maybe a couple... Um, or at least one conference championship. Had we been in conference games, we don't know what would happen with us season one. But now I wanted to make two different conferences. So we have the Big 12 North, which is made up of BYU, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and West Virginia. And the Big 12 South, which is Baylor, Houston, Oklahoma, TCU, Texas, and Texas Tech. And I did set up protected rivals. The rest of these protected rivals don't really matter because most of the rivals are still within the conference, except for Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. So I did make that a protected rivalry. So every season we will play Oklahoma State. I'm hoping this doesn't glitch it out too much. I know that used to be a problem with the updated rosters is they would do that, even though this is, you know, we're almost gone with those rosters that we started with. But I'm actually pretty excited to do this. And actually have a conference championship game, which I'll show you the conference rules. The uh, conference championship game is going to be held at the OU Texas Stadium. Just because that's probably the most neutral. And realistically, it's probably going to end up OU or Texas and someone else. But looking at the Big 12 South, like ranking wise, it looks powerful. We have number 5 Baylor, number 9 Houston, and number 7 Oklahoma. Well, the North just has number four, West Virginia. And the rest of these teams aren't too impressive, except maybe BYU and Kansas State. So we will see how that goes, but let's go ahead and, I guess, go into making our schedule. Okay, so this is what our schedule is going to look like next season. The first game, we're going to be at UTSA, but it is going to be in the Cowboy kickoff game. So we'll be back at Cowboy Stadium, just like we were for the Cotton Bowl. And then we play Michigan in Norman and why is it no I want Michigan at home why is it glitching out like that let me um, yeah let me do that because I feel like it's gonna glitch out and make me at Michigan for the second year in a row and I don't want to do that yeah make that versus okay so Michigan's coming to Oklahoma and then we take on our new Big 12 opponent, BYU, and then we go into TCU, and then at West Virginia, then at Texas in the Red River rivalry, obviously. And uh, I know the game... All right. All right. So before, it's uh, actually switched it on me, and it took it out of that stadium, so I want to make sure it was there. And then we have a bye week. Then we're actually um, playing Ole Miss and Norman. I don't know why. This was on the schedule, but we're going to keep it. And then um, UCF. That's also kind of in the middle of nowhere. So, should we make it someone else? I didn't notice this at first. I don't want to play an FCS team that late in the season. Um, let's make it... Let's make a rematch against Georgia in Georgia. God, that's probably going to cost me a potential undefeated season if I'm undefeated by that point. But, we'll add in a couple uh, tough schedules. And then, we have Oklahoma State. And then at Texas Tech. Then Houston. 
and then at Baylor, and then the conference championship. Now, that last matchup against Baylor could decide who's going to represent the Big 12 South in the conference championship, which is pretty big. Um, I don't know if I want to keep Georgia here. I feel like we we have UTSA, but I feel like Georgia is going to be a powerhouse by that point in the season, and I don't want to... Like, it doesn't make sense to play an out-of-conference powerhouse that late in the season. So let's make it UCF. We'll go to UCF, sure. I like that. Still an A-plus uh, strength of schedule, but we're not going to play Georgia. So we have Michigan, and, well, that's week two. So we're going to start off at UTSA and Cowboys Stadium. So And that'll be against Cody Thomas again. And I'm excited for that because we killed him last time. That, that should show him he shouldn't leave because he would have been the starter either this season or next season. And uh, let's just go back to that and make sure that it 100% saved. And it did. So now we can leave. And now we have red shirt players. This is going to be fun. Who do I want to make sit an entire season? I'm actually surprised Mark Bailey has not transferred out of here. Because, like, he hasn't gotten any playing time. That was the reason Corey Cannon got playing time against Kansas. Is because I didn't want him to say that he wasn't getting playing time in the transfer. Oh, this is easy. Bryce Irvin, you're getting redshirted. I'm also changing your number from 48. You will not wear number 48 on this team. Um, Rodney Austin, you're getting your number or you're getting redshirted. Your number will stay the same. Ronald Hickman and Josh Johnson are both getting redshirted. Tight end. Um, I'll redshirt JP Harris because I want him to at least kind of improve, but we are gonna start Derek Martin. Or not start, but he's going to be our backup. Red shirt that third string left tackle. Red shirt that third string left guard. Um, do we have a right guard that we can... Oh. I'll red shirt him for the time being. If a right guard gets injured, then I'll possibly put him in. Red shirt left, or left end. Don't want to red shirt anyone there. Um, yeah, red shirt you. Because I can just move a left end over. We did not retro you last season. Actually, what? Did we have two Polans on the team? I think we have two Polans on the team, and I didn't notice that. Hold on. Yeah, we do. We have EJ Poland from Bedford, Texas, and we have Brandon Poland from Maywood, Illinois. All right, left outside linebacker. No one to retro. Middle linebacker. Aaron Arrington. If it comes down to it, I will put you into the game, but as of right now, you're being redshirted. Along with Willie Jenkins. Cornerback, um... Van Miller, you need to be redshirted. And... If I redshirt Mobley, how many people are we left with? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I like that. Because I want to use Summers. Um, yeah, Chris Washington. I was happy to scout you, but you're probably going to move down to four. Because I want Summers to get a little bit of playing time. Free safety, uh, we have Tom Palmer, who will be redshirted. And we have Kyle Hill, who will be redshirted. And that is everyone who's going to be redshirted on this team. And you saw it here. So now we go to depth chart. And our starting quarterback is going to be Baker Mayfield. If he has a bad start, I will not hesitate to put in Hanson. Halfback is going to be Samaj P. Ryan. Good, good call, video game. Um, wide receiver. I like that lineup. That's pretty much the same lineup we had last season. Tight end, Marcus Moyer. Uh, we know the line is good. Left end, I'm fine with that. Um, I don't think there's anything we really need to change except for cornerback where we're going to put in Summers. So Marcus Summers will be our nickel DB. Now... The only thing we have to determine is our kick returner. Which last season I went based off speed and acceleration. Uh, we're not putting some AJP run back there, so y'all can forget that one. Can't put Bryce Irvin back there. Uh, got a bunch of people that are redshirted. Devin Morris. 93 speed, only 89 acceleration. Edward, I don't want to put our number one TV back there. Summers. Okay, so we're gonna have um, and Mixon will be our backup. He's not that. 
Mixon has good acceleration, but he didn't have a great speed that I like. So I think Summers is going to do a little bit better. So Marcus Summers is actually going to be our kick returner. And we will keep Mixon as our punt returner because I'm going to need to break tackles with that. So there is your depth chart for Season 4, at least for Week 1. Okay, so I haven't done this the past couple off seasons where I've actually shown number changes and stuff. The first thing I wanted to do this off season is I wanted to give Baker Mayfield his actual real life number, which is number six. He's had eight throughout this entire series, which I believe belonged to Stan Von Taylor. I think I remember someone on defense had it, but now that he's gone, we give number six to Mayfield. And I also added the uh, bot or top half sleeves because that's actually what he wears, at least from the Google images that I'm seeing, he wears half sleeves. So now at this point in their careers, um, giving number 28 to a running back at Oklahoma is a big deal, mainly because of Adrian Peterson. But now we're going to give it to Bryson Irvin, who was the number one halfback coming out of high school. We're not going to see him play at all this season unless we get some serious serious injuries to the running back position. Also, Alex Ross wore this, and he ended up being, you know, a big part of the team last season with the nine kick returns. And also made his sleeves long and took away a back plate that he was wearing. And now our first one that we're actually going to see on the field is Marcus Summers, the number one DB coming out of high school. And he's going to be our kick returner slash our third string DB, which means he will play the nickel defensive back. And in case that does not, you know, translate well to you, um... He's going to be guarding the slot receiver most of the time. He's got definitely the speed for it with 93 speed and 93 acceleration. And I actually want to check his... Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. This kid's going to be a beast in a couple years. As long as he doesn't bust. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the off-season video. And hopefully you guys are ready for Season 4. I know I am. I have, once again, high expectations for this season. We have a 99 overall quarterback. He was 99 overall last season, and he only got better. So he should actually be better than Trevor Knight is. We have Samaj P. Ryan, who's better. We have the same exact receiving core, pretty much. And we have, I think, what is going to be a better secondary. Not as good linebacking, though. So our linebackers are not as good as last... You, know, you guys know what I'm trying to say. Our linebackers are not as good as last season's, even though they kind of fell apart near the end of the season. But hopefully you guys are ready, and I will see you guys in week one.